In today's video, I want to show you guys on how you can make a Google Sheets task management board for your group project, team projects, or whatever it may be. So that way you and your peers could easily track tasks such as their due date, who they're assigned to, what the status currently is, and all the other tasks that you have currently. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Okay, so here I am on a new Google Sheets document. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to create a list of tasks that me and my group mates are going to do, you know, their due dates and along with the description and who it's assigned to, right? So the first thing I want to write down is task name here on cell one. Now we're just going to have these as the headers, uh, description, and I'm going to do a due date as well. So I know exactly when this task is due. I want the status of this task. So whether it's uh, to do or in review in progress, um, and I want the assignee of who is going to complete this task, right? So very simple here. We just made a header. I'm going to go ahead and select the first row here by clicking the number one. And I'm going to hit control B for bold. And I'm just going to go ahead and increase this uh, font size here. And again, you could also kind of expand it a little bit just so it's not as congested. Uh, you know, so task name, description, uh, due date here, status. I'm just going to go ahead and make it a little bit wider. And same with the assignee as well. Now, I can also just uh, kind of center align, or I could just center align the first row uh, as well because these are just like header titles. So I'm going to go ahead and here go click to this uh, text align and hit center. Okay, perfect. Now for task name and description, uh, these two, I want the text to wrap. So that way, like it doesn't go overboard. Like, so for example, if I'm typing a really long description here. It doesn't do that, but rather I want it to kind of wrap, right? So what I want to do is go to A and B. So I'm just hitting A and B as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go to text wrapping here and make it wrap. So that way you can see it just kind of wraps and it doesn't go overfill other uh, other columns, right? Perfect. So we have this very, very simple uh, and easy header here. Um, now what I want to do is I want to go to date. So due date. Let's format that into a date. So click the column C format. And now what we want to do is want to go to number and do date. Now you could do date and time if you're really specific about like certain deadlines and time. But you know, for, for this one, let's just do um, date. So for example, we have something like December 6, 2026. It just formats it into a nice date for us. And again, you could change the formatting of the date in format number and date. Now let's go to status. Now the way I want to do this is I kind of just want to have it into a drop down. So if you hit column D here, and actually control click the status. So it's everything except for that first header. What we can do is we can actually go ahead and hit right click and click drop down. Now what this uh, does is that it kind of just populates everything into a drop down here. Now uh, on the right hand side, you can see that there are actually different options that you can do for the drop down. And what I want to do is I'm going to just uh, populate it to the different statuses. So for example, to do, uh, and then we can do uh, in progress and notice how I'm doing all caps here. It doesn't really matter, but um, I honestly think it's better if I do all caps so that way it's consistent. Um, so to do in progress in review and complete it. Now you can go ahead and also change the different colors for these drop downs. So you can see a preview here of how it looks like. Uh, I could just change the to do to red in progress to yellow, kind of just like resembling traffic lights, right? Uh, in review to blue and complete it to green. So just hit done here and you can take a look over here that you can see there are things like to do in progress in review and completed. Perfect. So now what I want to do is uh, I am just going to, for example, do a dummy task uh, record, for example, video. Uh, and my description is going to be record a video on how to make a task management board. Uh, the due date is going to be, uh, let's just say tomorrow, 25. And the status is to do and the signee is me. So we have a signee here. Okay, perfect. Now that we have this, I kind of want to make a Kanban board where we kind of see every different statuses and the tasks that kind of correspond to that status. So what I can do is I can actually go here and rename this sheet to tasks, just so that way it's easier to see. And I'm going to go ahead and add another sheet here and just you can just rename it to Kanban or whatever it is like visual visual board or whatever, right? And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and change uh, and have the headers now, but this time it's going to be for the tasks themselves or the status themselves. So it's going to be to do. And again, I'm keeping the same capitalization cadence. It's actually kind of important. Uh, and I'll explain to you why in a second. 
we have in progress, we have in review, and I'm just hitting tab here and we have completed. Now what I can do is I can select all these columns and just kind of stretch them out a little bit so that way they stretch uniformly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bold them. I'm gonna go ahead and center align them as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and increase the font size for the first row and first row only because I don't want the other one to kind of increase in size, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, maybe do a 14 point font here. And what I can do is I can change the colors of to do again, corresponding to the other color list, right? So this is red In progress is going to be yellow in review is going to be blue and completed is going to be green as in we're done. Now for these headers, I could just go ahead and pick like a darker color. So that way it looks a little bit better um, and it looks a little more distinct. So we have in review completed a darker green here. Perfect. So now we have our, our own little uh, progress tracker board, right? Now, what I want to do next is I want to start importing the tasks that I have just added into this task sheet right here into this Kanban uh, sheet, right? And how do we do that? So I will walk you through exactly right now. It's a very, very easy and simple formula. So what you want to do is go ahead and do a formula. So equal sign, you want to do a filter, okay? And open parentheses, you want to select the range. So what, what is the range going to be? Well, it's going to filter out these task names. So go ahead and click column A here, all the entirety of column A, hit comma. And what do we want that's going to be in this uh, position, right? Well, we want all the to do's. We want all the status to do. So basically what you want to do is you want to filter, grab everything that's on column A. And what's the condition? Well, if column D is equal to equal to what, right? Is equal to I'm going to go ahead and go back to this Kanban here is equal to this. So this top one here says to do. So if it equals to to do, populate it here, closed it, and then bam, there you go. And look what look what just happened. We just imported our first task here, uh, which is record video. So for example, we have another one, let's like wash the dishes, right? Here's an arbitrary example. And we are gonna make it to do again, and let's assign this to Mike, for example, okay? Uh, look what happens. Boom. Wash the dishes comes over here. Okay. Now you can see that if we put it in, in progress, it doesn't move exactly. The record video doesn't move to in progress yet, but that's because we didn't do these other columns. So now what you want to do is instead of just creating ev like, you know, rewriting the formula, obviously we want to automate this and kind of drag it. So we're very, very important is that these a to a here, you want to put a dollar sign in front of that. And why is that? Uh, what does that do exactly? It actually locks the uh, the column on this on the task. So I'm just gonna hit enter here. It locks it to this. So if I drag this over, it's not going to go to like B, C, D, right? It's just going to lock it a column A to column A and column D to column D, uh, which is the status, right? If we remember column D is the status. Um, and this one, the A1, we don't have to lock it because later when we drag this across like this, you can actually see that what happens is that it's go it's now matching B1 to in progress, right? And again, I know we kind of dragged the color out so we can go ahead and change the colors back to blue, green, and uh, yellow. So there you go. And why is it NA? Well, because there's no matches uh, found there, okay? But it's fine to leave the NA there, meaning like we don't have anything that's in progress. But as soon as we move, for example, wash dishes to in progress, you can see it now transfers over to wash the dishes, right? Um, and again, what you want to do with these ones uh, in particular is that you want to make sure that they wrap. Okay, so in case that the task name goes overfill uh, to the sales space, it will actually just wrap it down. Okay, so now let's get a little bit more advanced. What if we want to do the task name and have, you know, who it's assigned to, maybe its description and the due date all here in this board, right? How do we do that? Uh, and that's actually very, very possible. So what we can do is that we're, we're filtering the task, right? So task A to A is getting its name, okay? And if we do an and symbol here, and you do something called char open parentheses 10, char, oh, oops, char open parentheses 10. Now what char 10 does is that char 10 is actually an enter sign here in uh, Google Sheets, okay? And in, in, in character form. Uh, and you just, so basically just treat this as an enter, okay? And the and sign is just joining these two together. So again, we're getting a little bit more advanced, but it's very, very easy to uh, understand. Now, if we do and char 10 and we do another and here and we'll grab, uh, for example, task E, 
right? E to E and hit enter. What happens is that we actually get uh, the E as in the assignee, right? We get uh, who it's assigned to. So you can see here that, hey, record video and it has my name, Jeremy, because it's assigned to me. Now you can do another formatting uh, to make it a little bit prettier uh, by adding something called, uh, by adding quotation marks in front of the tasks EDE. Type in assignee and then opening colon like this. And then just join it together with the and symbol. And guess what happens? Boom, record video assignee Jeremy, right? And I could do the exact same thing with due dates. You could do the exact same thing with description. But let me just show you how exactly it's done again. So remember, if we want to add more things or a new line into in the cell, you want to add an add and symbol char 10. OK, char 10 is a new line break. If I just hit enter here, you can see there's already a new line here. And the reason why these aren't populating exactly the same is because I didn't drag it over yet. But I'm going to do that in a second. And then what I can do here is I could do the and symbol again, do a uh, colon uh, or uh, yeah, a, a quotation mark do okay colon and then when is it due well we're gonna grab that from here we're gonna grab that from here this due date here so do an and symbol we're joining this due uh from task c to c okay we hit enter here we get due four five nine six four okay now what you can do is you can actually format this task c to c by uh, writing down text open this right so task c to c and we're gonna format it into this format month month date date year 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 like this so what this exactly does is that it formats it into a date format hit enter and bam you can see here 11 2025 so we have this exactly you know record video uh, assignee is me and it's due at this date okay so again i know the formula is a little bit lengthy but again, you don't have to filter this much stuff. You can just do something basic like the task and it'll just do it itself. This is just if you're like try hard mode like me, okay? And then uh, you want it to go like this. Uh, again, my task CDC here, don't forget to hit the dollar sign. So that way when, you, when we stretch this later on, it will just kind of automatically populate. And I'll show you exactly, I'm grabbing this bottom corner, dragging it, and you can see here that they're all populated. So we have this example from Wash the Dishes. Um, and again, you can change the color again since I just kind of dragged everything and the red kind of took over. But now you can see here if we have another video, for example, uh, buy a pizza, you know, buy a pizza for a description, whatever. And due date is going to be um, some arbitrary date. And we're going to do to do. You can see that it just, you know, it just follows along. Now you can see here that the due date is wrong. It's, uh, you know, December 30th, 1899. But that's uh, that's probably just the default date. We don't have a due date here, but as soon as we changed it to tomorrow, for example, it will change it here to 110325. Okay, that's just like the do that's just like the uh, default. If there isn't anything here, the blank, then and if we format it to a month, date, and year format, it will just change it to that. But again, you can see here it's very very easy to create, very very simple. Uh, we're moving things along. You know, we could probably have it in review. It just moves along to the next column, and you know, put a put a uh, assignee here so for example we have Mike and Soli and me and you can see here that it automatically populates and that is exactly how you can make a task management board in Google Sheets very easy and very very fast oh yeah one more thing here on this spreadsheet is that if you want to create a filter you can just go ahead and select row one here go to data and create and click create a filter and exactly what that does is that you're able to sort you're able to toggle the different things. So you can change the descriptions, you could toggle the due date, and you could sort it from ascending or descending order. You could change the status here. So if you wanna only see things that are in progress, you could change that as well. Again, completely optional, but the filter is very nice. So you could sort it, toggle it, and make your list very, very modular. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit the like and hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys all in the next video.